Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to this Jewelry Sisters channel. Today's topic for discussion is corporate governance. This is as it is a very huge topic to be discussed. So it is not possible to be completed in a single video. So I have made a, a separate playlist in YouTube which concentrates solely on corporate governance. So this is the first part of corporate governance which deals with the evolution of this concept called the corporate governance the scenario which i have concentrated both in india as well as the worldwide like united kingdom united states of america and germany etc and the concept how it has got familiar in this decade alone and what is the meaning of it and what is the exact definition of this concept corporate governance and what are the various principle has been adopted in this corporate governance let us see let us begin have you heard the concept called corporate governance corporate governance is nothing but the manner of directing and controlling the actions and affairs of an entity entity is nothing but a company so it is a set of systems or the principles and the processes by which a company is governed to exercise the powers and actions to achieve the goals of an organizational entity or even a company so a company or the organizational entity be it private or even it may be of a public or even a statutory body on the whole it will be defined as a person that is artificial person by law so from the eyes of the law these are all the entities which will be seen as an artificial person so it can enjoy its independent existence from its owners so the person who directs and governs the business of a company are called directors who has been elected by its owner called the shareholders of a company you would have come across the word company whereas have you come across the word organizational entities organizational entities which will be included as schools charities clubs sporting bodies trust and state owned enterprises or in any incorporated or registered as a companies under companies act 2013 to be very prompt in my explanation i'll be giving a very famous and easily understandable illustration or example usually in a democratic country a government is a system to which the powers are been exercised and it will be shared by the legislature executive and the judiciary with the goal of improving the quality of the life for all the citizens so as like that of the the democratic country a company or the organizational entity exercises its powers and actions to achieve its goal of an the objective of such company so it provides the guidelines and the procedure on how the company can be directed or controlled to fulfill its targets and objectives in a manner that would add value to the company and is also to beneficial for all the stakeholders in a long term you would have understood the concept of corporate governance but then do you know how the evolution of this corporate governance would have been happened this evolution is a evolution of this corporate governance the, the term corporate governance is itself is a very young discipline to us that has grown up to a deep seated concerns raised by a spectacular and a well popular corporate failures when analyzing how this corporate governance developed in this response to corporate failures such failures were caused in the area by insider loans compensation scandals and fudging financial statements and inefficient and unethical conduct of external auditors for the companies and the closed decision making processes and the powers which would have obviously lead to the corruption and the non transparency in a company to meet up such failures in each and every company in different countries 
Many companies have brought up different codes to make up such failures. For example, in US, the collapse of Enron and Arthur Anderson, World.com, and others from the late 2001 to date have generated interest in corporate governance and a series of regulations and the statutory provisions were enacted in 2002. Through one famous act called Sarbanes Oxley Act, its approach was the problem of the corporate scandals and being it proved as a cumbersome and it was very difficult to implement it. So this was the situation was in US, whereas in UK, several reports were being brought up and implemented to tackle the situation of failures in the companies and corporate governance. So the first report on the corporate governance was the Cadbury's report, which was published in 1992 with the code of best practices. And the second one was Miner's report, which was produced by a committee chaired by Paul Miners in 1995. It actually more concentrated on the relationship between the companies and institutional inv investors, which has given more powers to the institutional investors to voice out their issues. The next third code which was brought up in UK was that the Greenbury Report, which was set up on the recommendations of the Cadbury Committee to review the progress on corporate governance in the UK and its state companies as well. And it was published in the year of 1995, focused mainly on the director's remunerations. So director's remuneration in sense, it this was made a check to the fat cat directors who are over remunerated themselves at the expenses of the shareholders, especially in the new private companies or the organizational entities which were made the instances of recommendations made to the remunerations committee as well and also it recommended the performance based director services and where and whereby which the remuneration can be allotted to each and directed according to the performances or the services done to a company the next fourth report was Hampel's report. It was drafted in 1995 by Sir Ronald, Ronald Hampel. The sole task is to review the recommendations of the Cadbury and Greenbury committee reports and it was published in the year 1998 and covered the corporate governance issues like ideal composition of the board and the roles of the directors in a company and the remuneration of the directors need to be uh, I mean commander and role of the shareholders and particularly on the institutional investors powers and rights and financial reports auditing and financial statements and communication between the company and the shareholders and the next one was the combined code brought up on the whole of all the reports made before and in the year of 2003 the Hicks and Smith report was brought and in the, during the year of 2009 Sir John Walker on the corporate governance of UK was also brought up. Likewise, in Germany, the Crom Code. In India, the corporate failures obviously caused by the forging of annual financial accounts, for example, uh, a Satyam scam. And uh, the legal provisions uh, which was invoked by each and every company once it is incorporated or registered is by the Companies Act 2013. As I told you earlier, this uh, evolution of corporate governance framework in India was obviously due to the corporate failures caused by fudging of annual financial accounts among others, which gave birth to the drafting and crafting of more than five codes on, on the corporate governance in India. So the first, uh, considering the emergence of the code of best corporate governance practices all over the world, when it was very high, like Cadbury, Greensbury, Hamper Committee in US and UK in 1999 itself, the SEBI constituted a committee on corporate governance under chairmanship of Sri Kumar Mangalam Birla to promote and raise the standard of corporate governance in respect to listed companies alone. 
and the SEBI's board in its meeting held on January 25, 2000, 2000 considered the recommendation of the committee and decided to make the amendments to the listing uh, uh, agreement on February 1st, 21st of 2000 for incorporating the recommendations of the committee by inserting new new clauses in the equity listing agreement as well as class 49. So just because of this Erron debacle of 2001 in US, the Indian government to wake up and the year of 2002 itself, Naresh Chandra committee was appointed to examine and the recommendations was made through inter alia amendments to the law involving the auditor claimed relationship and the role of independent directors of a company. To improve the further level of corporate governance standards in India and to constitute a second corporate governance committee chaired by Mr. Narayana Murthy of Infosys Technology Limited as well. And in August 26th of 2003, revising its clause 49 of the listing agreement. Likewise, Ganguly Committee in April 2002 and Report of Consultative Groups of Directors of Bank 2001 and Report of Advisory Group on uh, uh, Corporate Governance 2001 and uh, the SEBI Committee 2003 and it, the list goes on for the evolution of corporate governance framework in India. So these are some of the principles of corporate governance where the integrity and the fairness which deals as a first principle of corporate governance which means nothing but impartiality or lack of bias. It is nothing but it is merely to the way companies and the other offices like directors treat the stakeholders with some disabilities such as minority stake shareholders, employees, foreign investors as against the dominant players such as a majority shareholders and it also provides the effective redress for violation of such. It also ensures the transparency in a company that timely accurate disclosure of all the material matters including the financial situations, performance, ownership and corporate governances is made. And moreover, the financial statements are prepared in accordances with the international financial reporting standard or not. That is simply called as IFRS. The companies registering filings are up to date or not. The check is made there and the high quality annual reports are published and the website based disclosure is in place or not. So the next basic principle of this uh, corporate governance is to comply with all the laws which is relevant and also which is applicable to the companies and to be followed by it also. And the next final principle of this corporate governance is accountability and responsibility. Accountability is nothing but management is accountable to the board of directors and the board is accountable to the shareholders. It's simple now. Likewise, many other principles are also being adopted. So totally uh, till now, if I counted 11 principles was being adopted under this corporate governance. Uh, let me tell you the, uh, the name, the word, the term loan, fairness, independence, sustainability, good board practices, control environment and board commitment and openness, reputation and the stakeholder inferences. So, these are all the legislative frameworks on the corporate governance in India. So, first legislative framework was the Companies Act 2013, which provides for the basic framework for regulation of all the companies and the certain provisions were incorporated in the Act itself to provide for the checks and balances over the powers of the board, like loan to the directors or the relatives or associated entities. And obviously, it needs the central government's permission and the interested contract needs board resolution and to be entered in the registrar and interested directors not to participate or to vote and appointment of the director or the relatives for office or the place of profit needs approval by the shareholders if the remuneration exceeds the prescribed limit obviously the central government's approval is required and the audit committee for the public companies having paid up capital of rupees 5 crores and shareholders holding 10 percent can appeal to the court or the company law board in case of the operation of mismanagement 
So apart from the basic provisions of Companies Act 2013, every listed company needs to comply with the provisions of the listing agreement as per Section 21 of Securities Contract Regulation Act 1956. Non-compliances with the same of this act would lead to the delisting under section 22A or monetary penalties under section 23E of the said act can be done. Further, the SEBI Stock Exchange Board of India is empowered under section 11 and section 11A of SEBI Act to prescribe the conditions for listing. However, section 32 of the SEBI Act 1992 states this state that the provisions of the act shall be in addition to and not in derogation of the provision of any other law for the time being in force. And the other legislative frameworks of the corporate governance is uh, standard listing agreements of stock exchanges, accounting standards issued by the Institute of CA of India, that is Chartered Accountant, uh, simply called as ICAI, and secretarial standards issued by the Institute of Company Secretaries of India, simply called as ICSI, which works as a watchdog for all the companies or the organizational entities, whether they are complying with all the laws prevalent to it or not. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I hope you all understood the concept corporate governance in detail. So I will be uploading my part two of the series corporate governance by tomorrow. Please do support us and those who have not subscribed our channel, Jewelry Sisters, please subscribe it now and do like, comment and give the feedback. And if it is bad, also no problem so that I can improve myself from the next video onwards. Do support us. We'll keep rocking it. Thank you guys. Thank you so much.